So welcome to this lecture about Introduction to Mobile Application Development. So for the objectives of this lecture, we're going to differentiate the types of mobile apps. We'll also have to identify the advantages and disadvantages of different mobile development approaches, and also explain the underlying concepts and different platforms of mobile applications. So let's start by talking about mobile application. So a mobile application is a software application developed specifically for use on small wireless computing devices, such as smartphones and tablets. And most of these mobile applications can be categorized into the following. We can have apps for e-commerce, games, messaging, entertainment, social media, productivity, music, maps, and news. So perhaps uh, some of you have already installed either one of these categories on your phones. Um, primarily, these uh, apps are here to help us uh, work with um, our day-to-day -day transactions or activities. No? Uh, it could be either uh, through by entertaining ourselves through games, no, or listening to music, no? so and there are so much more, no, uh, categories that we might not have able to list it here, but uh, for sure, uh, these apps are intended or designed uh, with the intention to um, help you with uh, your day-to-day -day activities. An example of this app, perhaps, that is so popular in the Philippines is Facebook. It is owned by uh, Meta, a popular free social networking website that enables users to share information and photos and keep in touch with family and friends. No? So most likely, uh, we installed Facebook no? uh, for social uh, socialization no? and um, maybe perhaps through uh, messaging, uh, we can also chat our friends and our family members. So as we try to examine it, it Facebook is designed to really help us um, be connected no, uh, with one another. In the Philippines also, uh, we have this very popular um, payment service application owned by uh, Globe Fintech Innovation Incorporated. We have here Gcash. So I guess uh, Gcash can also be uh, somewhat a relevant, uh, shall we call it, relevant application that has been helping us during our time in the pan pandemic. No? Um, it enables us to purchase uh, goods and services no uh we, without going outside no uh, because during the pandemic of course we were not allowed to go outside and purchasing food and even um buying some goods no uh, can be uh, can be a serious uh, problem no if, if ever we're going to go out and in the pandemic time no? so we have gcash no as one of those technology that is developed here in the philippines no? that help us uh, to go um or to help us in um yeah, during the pandemic time so here is a list of the most used mobile apps in the philippines now in terms of downloads consumer spend and active users so as you can see here uh, in the philippines uh, it's really facebook that is number one in either any of these categories it is also followed by its uh, another external application which is facebook messenger so it is um, somewhat like a trend that in the philippines we are really uh, keen into uh, social media applications and uh, also applications that allows us to be entertained, no? like uh, Netflix, no? on even shopping uh, using Lazada and Shopee. So there are really a lot of variations of mobile apps. No? Uh, but again, uh, the main purpose of having this app is uh, for us to kind of um, transact no, on the tip of our finger, no, and and basically, uh, doing it, uh, in a way, na, uh, in any place at any time, no, uh, uh, because again, it's a mobile, uh, technology. So to start with, um, examining the types of mobile apps, no, that we're going to create, we'll have to first understand the different mobile platforms that we have right now. 
uh, most dominant among all of these platform is these two big giants. We have the Apple iOS and we have the Google's Android. No? So there is also Microsoft's Windows uh, phone, but I guess uh, if we try to examine the users that we have, majority of them is either Apple or Android. Here's a graphical uh, representation of the users that we have right now uh, in terms of uh, either Android or iOS market share. So as you notice, worldwide, we can see that Android owns a majority of this share, right? So maybe because of its um the maybe because in in Asia majority of us here are using Android and uh, primarily um most of the hand Android based handheld devices are way more cheaper now compared to uh, Apple's iOS uh, device and also um it's it's way more uh, accessible here in in let's say, for example, in the Philippines, to buy Android phones um, compared to Apple, no? uh, considering that it's pricey and um, like uh, in the likelihood of uh, using an app, usually um, Android is already sufficient enough no? uh, in, in doing uh, transactions or businesses no? using an app. However, um, the opposite of this uh, diagram really or the chart is the market share of Apple versus Android in the U.S. As you can see, iOS is leading uh, Android in the U.S. Uh, maybe because also it's uh, popular in the U.S. and and uh, that most of the consumer brands or most of the products in the U.S. that is, um, shall we call it, uh, owned by Americans, uh, they tend to uh, thrive in 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 this uh, in this. Uh, continent lugar no, or in this country so it could be uh us or canada no uh ios is um one of the uh leading uh platforms that we have right now now you might ask uh, why is it important for me to understand or know these trends as a developer later on uh you'll need to learn how to adapt to the existing trends in the market um, it's always good to have a research about what platform should my app be best deployed to. Uh, there are also concerns of uh, what market or what existing market do you have? Uh, if you intend, let's say, for example, to deploy an app in the Philippines, what is the most dominant type of platforms that we have in the Philippines? Because if you're going to, let's just say, deploy an app, in iOS for maybe testing and uh, it's really noticeable that there are only a few users of iOS in the Philippines, then uh, you might not have a lot of installed uh, applications no, on, on your uh, on your App Store or Play Store. So that is one thing. No? And another also is that um, most often uh, in the Philippines, since Android, uh, we are using Android-based uh, platforms, it's it's good to know if uh, what are those apps uh, in this type of platforms that are um, most likely be installed in in their phones, no. So um, these are just vital informations that you might find uh, not yet relevant, no. But sooner or later, no, when you try to design or conceptualize an idea and create an app, then this is one of those things that you must be concerned of. So, however, um, as of the moment, no, uh, we are not really uh, going to talk about market. Uh, marketing in in this aspect, no. Uh, but uh, again, it's always good to have an idea or a knowledge about um, the different market trends, no. Because uh, primarily we are developing apps for that uh, for the purpose of um, allowing uh, multiple users to uh, use our application. So. Let's talk about mobile application development. Now that we know the different platforms, let's go into how do we develop a mobile application. So uh, mobile application development is a process of creating software for mobile devices like smartphones, tablets, and uh, other handheld devices like maybe smartwatches. No? Um, primarily, uh, the target is usually Android or iOS. 
So to develop, we have to understand what are the ways and tools uh, to develop these applications. So first, let's look into the different mobile app frameworks that is available for us to use. So when you are a developer, um, there are always multiple options in developing a mobile application. It could be a native application. It could also be a hybrid app or a cross-platform app, or it could even also be a web application. So nowadays, there are plenty of tools that there uh, that is available over on the uh, internet now where you can search. And uh, for us, we will discuss uh, some of these development approaches now we could uh, take an idea from and maybe help us decide what kind of platforms do we wish to create in the future. So first we have the native stack. So then in the native stack, there are only two options since there are two, uh, not two really. Uh, in this case, we are going to talk only about two options that are mostly dominant in the market. So we have again we have Android, wherein in the Android development stack, there are several technologies that you must consider. Um, one of that is to learn how to program using Java and even also Kotlin. You know? So these are two programming languages that you might want to uh, invest in you know, if you are targeting Android development. And also, you need to learn how to uh, utilize XML and uh, you need to download the uh, different Android SDK that you'll need for your development, as well as the use of Android Studio as your integrated development environment. So there are some requirements no, in, in order for you to develop an Android application based on native uh, stack. Then we have also iOS development stack. So in the iOS, uh, there is also different technology stack that you'll have to uh, learn. No? So first, uh, as of the moment, they are actually leaning towards Objective-C as their programming language no? and Swift as well. And aside from that, uh, you need to download Xcode no? um, in order for you to uh, build an application no? and perhaps an IDE uh, that goes into that. Uh, now you can use in order for you to develop an iOS-based uh, mobile application. There is also a, the hybrid stack or the, shall we call it, the cross-platform approach. So cross-platform frameworks uh, that I have listed here are the three of the most popular cross-platform frameworks that we can find over the internet. No? Uh, we have Xamarin, Flutter, and React Native. So in this particular course, really, uh, we are going to focus on the use of React Native. So these three technologies are, or platforms will enable us to create a single code base mobile application that will allow us to deploy to either Android or iOS. So what's great about cross-platform frameworks is that uh, you don't need to learn a lot of technology stuff and you can, if you are, um, let's just say, a web developer, you can use your pre-existing knowledge in order for you to design your uh, mobile app. Then we have, lastly, the web stack. So in the web, uh, we are just basically going to use um, these types of uh, frameworks. We have here uh, Apache Cordoba, Ionic, and PhoneGap. Actually, we can consider this as well as cross-platform frameworks. But I kind of tag them here in the web frameworks because of the reason that uh, these uh, mobile app frameworks are using web technology um, and uh, primarily uh, they are not converted into native base uh, code. No, So meaning to say uh, the web technology that you are writing on your app is uh, the same code that is deployed on the different platform using WebView as a way to kind of uh, show these web uh, web based uh, applications now so but definitely uh, we can still install applications coming from this um, technology um, perhaps we can also consider PWA or progressive web apps as a new way to to build an app using web tech and as well as um, the use of responsive, no? responsive web-based uh, page. No? So there are three variations no? in these um, web uh, mobile development approaches. But the question would be, which tool should I use? So let's examine how do we decide 
if which tool should we use if ever we're going to develop an app. Uh, but basically, I just would like to put here a disclaimer no, that this is a, based on my personal uh, opinion and process of um, kind of categorizing or maybe let's just say putting up a criterion on what to decide when what app or what platform should I use uh, whenever I'm going to develop some some application. So let's start with the criterion. So first is we'll need to examine the performance, no? Then also the time that it, that we we're going to use in the development, and also the cost of the development. So these are the uh, measures that you'll have to consider if you're going to decide to create an app. No, so let's look at performance. So in performance, uh, there are some important questions that you'll have to answer if you're going to develop an app. First is, do I need my app to be fast? So if the answer would be yes, then your top priority perhaps is performance and uh, with that there is uh, a need for you to uh, prioritize performance later on we'll see uh, if performance is our priority what are the recommended uh, types of approaches that we need to uh, to utilize then uh, second question is do i require hardware intensive process so is your app rely or your uh the or your app have you know, a reliant or reliance on um, hardware processes. No, maybe it it needs uh, graphics uh, or maybe an uh, intensive processing uh, capabilities or maybe uh, camera. So maybe uh, these are the questions that uh, you'll have to ask if um, you are really prioritizing performance. Next would be uh, if time is of essence or concern. So. The question would be, do you have enough time for the development process? No? And another question could be, how much time does it take to learn the development process? Because uh, most likely, this is uh, one of those important things that you'll have to consider when you are developing an app. Because um, again, um, whenever we develop, there will be a likelihood of success and failure if we do not um, success or failure no? in, in that way uh, if we do not consider uh, time as as one of our uh, the the things that we consider in, in the development process the next will be cost no? so cost perhaps the best question that we will ask if we're going to develop is do you have enough budget for the development process no, so that will be one question. And second, perhaps, would be how much money or budget can you spend in the process of development? So could be that if you are going to develop this app, do you have the resources to pay the developer? If you are the, the one who will not develop, no, if you're going to hire someone to develop your app. So these are some of the concerns no, that you'll have to take into consideration. So if you're going to develop an app that you want performance to be your priority, so native is the best approach for that. Uh, second would uh, be cross-platform. And lastly will be web. No, uh, If you want to develop an app that that is uh, you're going to prioritize time, no, so web approach or web frameworks will be the best uh, considering that um, this is the fastest way to you know, develop application. Uh, second would come cross platform and third will be native and then it goes also from to cost no uh, as you can see web is really you'll need less time and and cost in the development but however it comes dead last in terms of performance and the most balanced among all of these approaches is cross platform and perhaps i would like to state it right here and this is the reason why i kind of uh, lean towards React Native as our uh, tool in our coursework, no? Um, because um, cross-platform development is uh, kind of in the middle of uh, among all of these three approaches, and this is uh, kind of a safe way, no? If you are going to develop an app that could be uh, time efficient, cost effective, and performance-wise, does it also uh, sacrifices performance, so cross-platform will be the uh, best approach for that. So let's go into the development process of a mobile application. So here are some things that we'll have to consider if you're going to develop an app. 
So here are seven of the steps no, that uh, I could recommend in developing an app. So we start from ideation, analytics, and market research. We go with app platform selection, UI and UX design, app development, testing, and deployment. So let's go into uh, the detail of uh, the following steps. So we have ideation. So ideation is the initial phase where developers and stakeholders brainstorm and conceptualize the mobile app. So as the steps imply, no, or kanang as it is, um, uh, as what we have also explained here, ideation is the first step, and usually this is where we consider uh, the, what I what will be the app will be the the uh, target market. No, of course this is just initial talk, no initial phase. And it's also uh, here it involves defining the app's purpose, target audience, features, and overall vision. So the ideation process really has uh, a significant um, impact in the development process because this is where you start to uh, ideate. Of course, uh, this is the starting point of what you want to create. No? Uh, developing something that you do not go into ideation will be useless because you will not have a clear vision of what you want to create. And in ideation, the goal is to create a clear concept and outline for the app's development. And after ideation, we then head to analytics and market research. So typically, um, if you're going to develop an app in a kind of way that you are going to create a startup, um, analytics and market research is one of the key parts of the process. Because in here, um, the validation process of your idea comes in. So it involves in extensive research no uh, to conduct an understand to conduct a study and understand the target market no uh, the user preferences and even the competitors no because you don't just create an app no and then uh, you don't know that there is already an existing uh, app created prior no uh, so if your your research about uh, this pro uh, about the app is uh, kind of that sufficient, then uh, it is bound also to failure. No? Even if you will uh, proceed to the development process, um, you'll have a have it a hard way of um, uh, looking into the the kind of the prospects of your app. No? So you'll have to um, first do analytics and market research. So it's always good to study first the market before you deploy or uh, before you start developing. So analyzing market trends and user behavior helps in making informed decisions regarding app features, pricing, and even marketing strategies. Next step will be app platform selection. So if you are if you have done your research on the market, then perhaps this is the next step. And primarily, when you've done the market research, you already know what platform you want to create to select. No? So it also helps that you undergo the step two before you proceed with ad platform selection. But uh, it is also key or important to choose the right mobile platforms for the app, no? like Android, iOS, Bayan, or it could be a cross-platform. So it's crucial because uh, the decision impacts the technology stack, the development tools, and the user-based app can reach. And even also the perhaps the hiring of the human resource that you'll need for the development. No? So it's also key that you'll have to uh, select the type of platform and also part, um, that will also mean that this could also impact the budget no, of your of your uh, app development. Next will be UX and UI design. So user interface and UX, user experience design involves creating the visual and interactive elements of the app. So typically, uh, this could also make or break your app. No? Um, considering that uh, with the UI, it also will create an impression on your Users, no, if your UI is poorly made, then typically no one wants to use it, right? It's it's also it follows that it's going to happen like that. Uh, but more importantly, right now it's also good to consider the user experience, no, of your user that you'll have to design an app that prob probably not that complex to use, no, uh, but still gives uh, the right um, purpose or service that it can provide. So UI design focuses on the aesthetics and the layout, 
while UX design aims to provide an intuitive and satisfying user experience. The next step will then become or will follow with the app development. So app development is the core phase of building the mobile app. And in this phase, usually the developers write the code and integrate features and ensure the app functions as intended. It also involves programming, no? database integration, and uh, third-party API integration, no? depending on the app's requirements. So um, um, basically, when you do the app, mobile app development process, this is the... I guess the most long or the, the longest time that you'll be uh, working on your mobile app now, uh, because this involves the programming, testing, and a lot of things uh, that goes into the development of uh, mobile application. After app development is testing, no? so testing is also an important phase that we could separate uh, app development and testing. There are a lot of considerations. Uh, one is you'll need to have um, an in-place na staging for your uh, API, perhaps, no, and staging uh, server. Uh, and in this process also, uh, you need to rigorously uh, identify, no, the bugs that you need to fix, the errors, and whatever usability issues, no. Uh, before you deploy the app, no. I, uh, if you deploy the app and there are so many bugs still, um, there it might be rated low on the Play Store or the App Store that you're going to deploy it. So it's important, no. In testing, uh, it includes functionality test, usability test, and performance test as well as uh, security test. So, uh, these are four of the testing that we'll have to undergo, no, during uh, or before the deployment of our app. The goal is to ensure the app works smoothly on different devices and under various conditions. Next will, uh, next step or the last step will then be deployment. So in deployment, uh, once everything or once uh, the app passes testing and meets quality standards, now it is deployed to the app stores. It could be in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store for public availability. So deployment also involves creating marketing materials. No, uh, it could. Been, uh, when you deploy an app, you'll need a social media uh, web page no, for marketing and even uh, also the banners no, and the screenshot of your app is required in order for you to um, uh, deploy, deploy the app. And you also have to set up analytics tools no, to see the performance of your app. And uh, basically, these uh, analytics tools are built in in uh, Google Play Store and App Store no, for Apple. Uh, but uh, of course, important also important in deployment is the planning for ongoing updates and maintenance. So, uh, will you update monthly? Will you uh, provide maintenance? Uh, how often do you do that? No, so you'll need to also sustain your app so that many uh, users will still be a be able to use your app. Because sometimes, when Google Play detects that your app is not updated to the latest version of the or of Android, no, uh, they kind of uh, try to suspend your app or maybe pause its deployment, no. So that is one uh, uh, one important detail that you'll have to consider now when you are uh, deploying an application. So uh, there is a need for us to constantly update our app uh, version or the Android, uh, the target Android version that we're going to use. <laughs> 